citizens, council, and candidates. My name is Karen Geach, and I have been a member, resident of the City of Guyton since 1983. I've had the pleasure of living downtown in one of the historic homes. I've had the privilege of serving on the historic committee, and I've also had the privilege of being a council person for four years. My question to Mr. Harville, Ted, and Jeremiah, all three of you, I have the same question for. Will you promise to serve our city and her citizens with transparency, integrity, ethics, morals, and convictions? 100%, absolutely. I'll raise my right hand up and say, I do. <laughs> Those are the fundamental principles which make government work. Government only works if the people can see what's going on if they're involved in it. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, Ms. Pillow, Mr. Reeser, Mr. Garvin, I didn't, I'm sorry, I meant you'd come up there too. <laughs> Mr. Garvin, do you agree to serve under those conditions should you be elected? I do. Thank you. Um, Mr. Mayor, Ms. Blow, Mr. Reeser, do you believe that you have served our city and her citizens with transparency, integrity, ethics, morals, and convictions during your tenure? 100% without a doubt. Most definitely. Absolutely, and I look forward to doing it again. <laughs> Thank you for your answers, Mr. Mayor. You have just said that you believe that you have served our city and its citizens with transparency, integrity, ethics, morals, and conviction. Yet I challenge you on your response. You have made, you have censored the citizens of this community. We are not allowed to interact with fellow council members without going through you first. You have also made the statement that our opinions don't matter except at the vote. You also agreed that you, you feel you have served our city ethically and with integrity. Yet when you were challenged on a situation that took place within our city during the paving of streets, a simple question was asked of you. You replied with an answer that was condescending and wrong. So I took it upon myself to ask the contractor the answer to the question. When I confronted you at City Hall about said conversation, you told me to get the hell out of City Hall. I feel like that is not showing integrity or ethics because you were challenged about a statement you made and you were wrong. You got, we both were angry, but you told me to get out of city, to get the hell out of City Hall. That's my building. That's my city hall. You just work for me. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to address that. I'll start with the first question you asked about rules of decorum. Rules of decorum were voted upon by all five members of council and approved unanimously. It is important for city meetings to be able to function in a timely manner. Some folks can stand up and speak forever, repeating themselves over and over again. And while yes, it is important to hear these people there comes a point where we can't talk about just anything in the city. It needs to be on the agenda. You have means of being put on the agenda. You have means of coming before the city council members outside of meetings. But when we're all arranged together, we also have families and lives outside of here and businesses that we sacrifice so that we can serve. 
As to telling you to get the hell out of City Hall, yes ma'am, that did happen. Your behavior in City Hall was inappropriate and the police department was considered to be called by our city manager. Instead, I lost my temper with you and asked you to leave in a means that was inappropriate. But you were out of order, ma'am, and that will not be allowed around my employees or in my City Hall. Mr. Mayor, I accept, that I accept the responsibility that I did get, raised my voice and I was angry. You called me a liar. And I didn't appreciate that. And as far as asking questions of the council before a vote is taken, you do not give us any opportunity. And you stated in several meetings that our opinion did not matter. Whose does, if not mine? And all of these people here. If we'd like to address that as well, anything that's on a public agenda, on the agenda for the meeting, can be discussed in that meeting. There's a public comment section at the beginning and at the end of every meeting. So if there's a vote to be taken, you are allowed to speak on it at council meetings. As far as the statement that was said to Mr. Scott Thompson, during a time of COVID, during a time where we were having meetings over Zoom and phone calls, when it was incredibly difficult to even understand how to work the dadgum thing, I lost my temper. I'm not a man who's not known to have a temper. I apologize for it. And at the same time, when someone will not stop talking in an online public meeting and continue to yell at council members and behave out of order, I lost my temper and said, I believe the following phrase, what was it? Your input is not necessary. Hold on a second. Let me no, your right input thing. is not necessary is exactly what you have said to us on I, numerous occasions, Mr. No, ma'am. I did not say it on numerous yes, occasions. Yes, you did. No, ma'am. Please let me finish my statement. Please give me the opportunity as I've given you. You have the floor. Hence the rules of decorum. We, in that heated meeting, I stated to Mr. Scott Thompson that we do not live in a democracy. We live in a representative republic, which means that we are elected and that outside of that vote, that's your opportunity to speak. That's not fair. That's inappropriate and it was short-sighted to me in terms of the reality of it. We all have a voice. We all have the ability to speak to our elected officials and that's how we get stuff done. If we had to poll 2,400 people every time that we wanted to do something in the city of Guyton, the system would not work. So we elect representatives. And that's why we're here tonight, to pick from this group of people who we want to represent us. And it's a great form of government. It's also an incredibly flawed form of government because we're people. We make mistakes. We make errors. And for those, I apologize. I have not been perfect. I have not been a saint. But I've come to this every time with my best intentions and my best foot forward, trying to do the best job for the people of the city of Guyton. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Lula Seabricks, and I have a question for all three councilmen. If you will come forward, please. Once it's running for council, not the mayor. I have your question also. All three candidates. Four, okay. My question is, what initiative, what initiative will you undertake to make our city more attractive to tourists and visitors? One of the things that I that's a good question. Um, one of the things that we want to do is protect what we have. We have a historic district that's the envy of a lot of towns, uh, and it's a wonderful opportunity for us to protect that and make sure that uh, it, it's part of who we are, part of the fabric of who we are. Earlier, there was a big discussion about mobile homes, and that has really gone off the rails. This council never voted to say no to mobile homes. We took a pause. And now we allow folks who want to put a mobile home in to do the same thing if you want to put a business or if you want to put a duplex, if you want to do anything that's outside of R1. Um, so what we're doing as a council is we're provide, protecting property rights of all of our citizens. And that's important because if you don't, you can have a mobile home right downtown. You can have uh, business anywhere in the city. Um, so we have good zoning uh, and planning ordinances. And we need more people to get involved with that. So I would encourage more people to volunteer and to help us create the vision for our city. Okay, let me repeat the question. 
what initiatives will you undertake to make our city more attractive to tourists and visitors? Um, I think we're in the process of doing that with the DDA. With, um, we want the DDA to do a beautification of the downtown area. That's one thing. The second thing is, is that within our plan, our master plan, we um, want to bring, we first need to bring in businesses. And then from there, we can decide what type of initiatives we can put forward. But the DDA is the first initiative and that can grow from there. Okay, kind of a long answer, but it's a, it's a complex question. I think the first thing is codifying and mapping out the historic district get, and adopting a local preservation ordinance and then working through the state to get state certification for that historic district because that'll open us up to grants to restore historic homes. It'll open us up to grants to restore the water tower, which the water tower is the best welcome sign that we could have for the city of Gatton. And on top of that, you have the DDA. I think the DDA is a great resource for the city because it opens us up to other avenues of state funding through grants and other things like the facade grant that can help the downtown businesses update their facade. And one thing that I would like to see do, like to see the city do, is to purchase the, the parking lot right there next to the Southern Cafe, turn that into a true parking lot, take the parking along, along Highway 17 out, extend the curb there for like the Mexican restaurant, the ice cream shop, and the pizza shop so that they can have outdoor dining, so that you have a, a larger area for them to have outdoor dining. And then on top of that, I would like to apply for CDBG grants. Ms. Pelot mentioned that earlier, but in three and a half years, they've never once applied for those. Those are a great resource to help the low-income individuals in this community, whether they be elderly or just be certain circumstances that are outside of their control that they can't fix their homes. Through CBD, we can restore the homes in this community through, with, the, uh, with the help of the Historic Preservation Ordinances. So it's, it's a combination of working through the DDA, working through the Historic Preservation Committee, and working through the city, and we're, everybody working together. So there's a lot of complex things that we can do to make that, that dream come true. Yeah, I, I agree with Mr. Chancey on that. But, you know, I think that, you know, first you have to ratify the, uh, the historical landmarks because right now there is no historical landmarks. You know, it tried to pass in 1982, but it failed because they wanted to tell you what colors you could and cannot paint your house. Uh, so that failed. So, you know, the, the, land, the, the signs you see in Guyton, they're pretty much false advertisements. So one of the things I wanted to do once elected is uh, pass the bill saying that, you know, Guyton is historic, send it to the state for the state to pass. So once we set that boundary for the Guyton Historical Commission, the landmarks, then you can start working on that. Then you can start saying, hey, look, Guyton is an actual, you know, national register uh, historical landmark. That'll start bringing in tourism on its own. And then working with the DDA, the DDA is doing a fantastic job with what they're doing and getting things off, getting things off the ground. So partnering up uh, with the DDA, uh, ratifying the historical landmark, uh, those two things by themselves will bring in tourism and uh, and the walking trail. The extend the walking trail. I mean, those those are things alone. I mean, will bring in tourism by itself. So. Uh, you know, then those two things will ensure that guidance for his days are still ahead. Thank you. Let me just clarify. Um, guidance is on the National Historic Places Registry. If you look it up, we're there. Dr. Willie Gray, uh, Greer Todd put us there. We've been there for a long time, and I, I have um, confirmation that some people have done that. They've they've gone through and they've rehabbed some of these old homes, and they've received tax credits. So that's in place. If you just Google it, it's, it's out there. National Historic Places. But it was never passed by council. So since it was never passed by council, it was never sent by the state to get ratified. So even though it's on the federal, you know, registry, since it was never passed by council and sent to the state, you know, it essentially means nothing. So. Thank you. Not really. <laughs> okay. On <laughs> um, the mayor. All candidates. <laughs>